Hey everybody! Welcome back to Cooking 101. Uh, I'm Jen. I'm a dietitian. I am not a professional chef, but I help people kind of figure out how to make healthy meals um, using kind of the foods that they have around their house or just how to improve what they're already cooking. Uh, so this has become such a big part of my job uh, that I decided to start a cooking show because everybody during quarantine was locked down, they're cooking more than they're used to, they don't know what to make, or they're making the same thing over and over and over again. Um, so I wanted to help people expand their horizons, so thus this show was born. Uh, today we are going to be working with shishito peppers, which are one of my favorite snacks, slash appetizers, slash garnishes, slash side dishes. Um, they look like this. These are my shishitos. They're kind of like if you took a jalapeno and then you made it wrinkly. That's what they look like. Wrinkly jalapeno. Not the same as a smooth jalapeno. And I'm saying this because my husband the other day confused them both or thought they looked exactly the same and he stuck all the jalapenos I had set aside into my shishito peppers so I had to fish them out. Um, but they are not jalapenos, they are not the same pepper, uh, they look slightly different. Um, so what are shishito peppers? They're an Asian pepper, um, they're pretty common in China, and you can see them in Japanese cuisine sometimes too. Um, they're awesome. I actually looked at the nutrition right before the show just so I could tell you why they're awesome. Uh, they have more vitamin C than you need in a day. 170% of your daily need. Now, it doesn't mean you're gonna OD on vitamin C eating these, but it means that they are very good for you. They're really high in vitamin C. Uh, they also have a lot of vitamin A, um, something like 80% of your daily value. Um, they have fiber. You know how I feel about fiber. Uh, very good for your gut. Very good for everything going on inside. Um, and they're just a really healthy snack. They're low in calories. A serving size is about eight peppers. Um, I wouldn't imagine anyone was going to sit there and eat 20, but they're pretty good. And so they've got lots of vitamin C, lots of vitamin K. They've got a few vi uh, B vitamins. They've got, um, did I say vitamin K? I, I can't even remember what I'm saying right now. C, A, K, and B. Those are your vitamins for shishito peppers. Thank you for bearing with me through that. That was very difficult. Anyway. They are super easy to make. That's the bottom line. That's the, that's the really crux of the situation here. They are so easy to make. Um, I usually make them in my oven. I like to just uh, toss them in a little oil and stick them in the oven. And I put them like under the broiler so it's really hot. And they blister up in like five minutes, which is awesome. Uh, there's just one problem with that plan that I had to make them. And that is that my oven broke. So I've got a broken oven. Uh, I had to order a new stove, so that's coming in a week and a half. That'll be fun. Um, but the next show you'll see, that means I'll have this brand new stove that looks impressive. Um, because, just to remind you guys, we're not going to be here next week. I'm going on vacation! It's my first time out of the house since this all started, and I need it, okay? Uh, I'll probably just post up a, an oldie but favorite video um because you guys have ones that i know you've tuned in for and ones you haven't um so i'll just do a repeat um or possibly i'll do a live video from vacation so who knows and that might actually be fun i don't know um we'll see uh where it takes me here so but today we're gonna be making this so it's gonna be great um you can make this on a stove top, so that's the good news. And, and again, it's not long, it's 10 minutes. This is gonna be like a record short video because I have very little to show you here. Very, very simple. Um, start with your uh, peppers. I have washed these, always wash your vegetables. Uh, and then I dried them by just wrapping them in a paper towel real quick. And then I put them back in the box so they looked all pretty. Um, so just wash your peppers, dry them off. You don't want them wet going into a pan. Uh, also, the prep for this, the beginning, until it gets into the pan, exactly the same as if you use an oven, uh, same preparation. So, you take your washed shishito peppers, you stick it in a bowl, bam, step one. Put that aside for later. Step two, get your favorite oil. I always use olive oil, even when I'm not supposed to, because olive oil is pretty versatile, and I like it, and it's good for you. Um, a couple tablespoons in you don't have to like drench it 
but the pepper should be coated in oil. So pour enough in that you can kind of mix it around. You just want to get them coated up. That means that they won't stick to the pan. Helps them get blisters. Now, what do we mean by blistered shishito peppers? Uh, when you are roasting peppers, they get little black spots on them where the skin kind of fries and boils up a little. This is a good thing. It makes flavor happen. So we want to get it to that point. We're just going to be doing it in a pan instead of in the oven. So coat it in oil, nice and shiny. Um, I like doing it this way instead of putting oil in a pan because when you put the oil in the pan, like I said, these are bumpy. Um, it's hard to get in every nook and crevice. You want a nice even coating and you don't want them drenched. So you don't want to fill this up with oil. That's dangerous anyway. You don't want to cook like that. Um, if you're baking, also toss in oil. Uh, lay them in an even sheet on a sheet pan. Uh, don't have them overlapping or covering each other. Uh, turn your broiler up to the highest setting and then you just stick the sheet pan under the flame and you're good to go. Uh, in this case, preheat your pan. Preheating the pan is important. You don't want to put it in a cold pan. That's not going to work. Um, what temperature are we cooking this at? We want to keep this down to medium. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it means that we're going to get more of an even distribution of the blistering on the peppers. If you cook it on high, some of them are going to be black by the time others are green. So you got to have a little bit of patience. It still only takes 10 minutes, so it's not that much patience that you need to call upon here. Um, so I've preheated it with a medium flame, just trying to get the pan nice and warm. We're waiting on that. Get it warm, do the thing. Um, type of pan doesn't really matter. Uh, I've heard people say use cast iron. Um, I don't feel like using cast iron because it takes longer to clean. I don't want to clean a cast iron pan right now. Uh, so I'm just using my regular uh, stainless steel nonstick pan, whatever it is. Um, still not obviously hot enough because I can just lay my hands on it. We're still waiting. You want to get it nice and nice and hot. So if you put some water in the bottom of it, it's going to sizzle a little bit. Do, do, do. I'm going to turn it up just to preheat and then I'm going to turn the heat down. Get it hot. Get it to the temperature I want. Then turn it down. Um, you notice I have not seasoned it yet. Seasoning is kind of the last thing you want to do here in these steps. Um, this is kind of like an edamame situation where you add the seasonings when it's all done. So just the oil for now. We're not going to interrupt with any of the cooking process. Uh, it still doesn't feel very hot. If you are just joining us, we are literally waiting for a pan to get hot. It's really exciting on Cooking 101 today. I hope you enjoy it. Um, Preheating the pan. Um, a lot of times I'll do this and then I'll walk away and forget what I was doing and come back and the pan is way too hot. So if that ever happens to you, just turn the heat down. You can remove it from the heat for a minute. Just let it relax. It'll come back down. Just don't add anything into it while it's super hot because that's really, really going to mess you up. Um, and just be careful. We are cooking with oil today. So you don't want this at the highest temperature it's going to be um, because the oil can splash and it can kick up into the air and it's gonna make a mess and that's the best case scenario. It could hit your skin, which sucks. And it's happened to me a lot because I've had a lot of cooking mishaps on my road to learning how to cook here. All right, that feels pretty good. I've turned the heat back down again. I'm gonna add my peppers. That's a nice little sizzle. Nice and loud in fact. I'm gonna turn it down a wee bit. Okay, it's calming down. So when you first add them, all I did was move them around so they're not stacked on one another. And you just let it sit for the first minute. They're going to just cook on one side. After that first minute goes on, um, you can also just let it until you feel like it's gotten a nice brown on one side. But after that first minute, you can start stirring it around and see how the underside looks. Um, you're going to get a nice peppery smell. Uh, let's talk about what shishito peppers taste like. So they look like hot peppers. They're usually not hot, um, but they sometimes are. About one in 10 are supposedly spicy. Uh, I don't know where they got that number because for the most part, I get lots of batches of mild ones. 
And then sometimes I go out and I order these at a restaurant and the entire thing is just spicy peppers. Like the world is playing a trick on me where I'm like, the next one will be fine. And it's not fine. So you're, it, it's a little bit of roulette. Sometimes these are spicy, sometimes they're not. Um, but for the most part, they're mild. I don't eat a lot of spicy food, but I love these. So I just kind of like test my luck every time I do it. If it's too spicy, I give up and I put them away. But uh, they're really tasty. They have a strong kind of peppery taste, like bell pepper, but a little bit sweeter. Um, and what's even better is that they take on any flavoring you want to add. So they're awesome. Uh, this is going to take, again, 10 minutes. So a minute has gone by. I'm going to stir, see how they're doing. All right, we, we've already got some blistering happening on one of them. This is all good. Oh, happening on a couple of them actually. So we are on the right track here. Let's see if I can zoom in the camera a little bit. Ooh, here we go. So this one's got some of that early blistering going on right there. It looks really nice. That's what we're going for folks. Like I said, these cook up pretty fast. So I'm going to start flipping these over just so we can start working on the other side. Now, you might want a blister that's a bit bigger. You are entitled to that. Just keep it going. They can turn brown. They can turn a little bit black. As long as the whole thing is not charred black, you're fine. You are on the right track. So, like I said, these are pretty low in calories. It's kind of a boon. So if you are hungry and you want to binge eat a tasty snack, you can feel very guilt-free about eating all of these. They are awesome. Serving size is eight. I think there's like a hundred calories in eight. Um, but again, there's fiber. This is not like eating a bunch of bread. So it's going to make you feel full. It's going to last a while. You're not going to digest it right away. So you want this nice little popping sound to go without it exploding. So that's why we keep it at medium heat. So while this is cooking up, let's talk flavoring. So the obvious one, a little bit of flaky salt good. I like it. It works really well. Um, these, I've talked about this before, but adding citrus to veggies is awesome. And shishito peppers really take citrus well. So I have lime today. Uh, you can use the lemon. Lemon also really awesome. You can, I really recommend use ponzu sauce or just get uh, the uh, citrus that goes in ponzu sauce. You can find that in an Asian market. Um, I'm absolutely blanking on what that citrus is called right now, but I'm sure it'll come back to me at some point. Um, ponzu sauce is like that, it's the Asian citrus and it's combined with soy sauce. It's really tasty. I had some in my fridge, so I pulled it out. Um, will you tell me what the citrus is? Nope, it's just a sudachi citrus. Uh, there's a different name for it. I just, it, I'm... I'm tired, I can't remember. Help. Uh, Alright, so we're blistering our shishito peppers. If you're just tuning in, I added uh, some oil-coated peppers to a pan. This is like the easiest thing in the world. It takes 10 minutes. Add oil, toss vegetables in oil, add to hot pan, cook at medium temperature for about 10 minutes until you get a nice little brown or black blistering effect going on to your liking. Um, I really find that uh, shishito peppers when they are cooked to the point that they get a little soft and shrink a little bit, um, that's the best consistency. So that's what I'm looking for while cooking mine up. And some of these are pretty big, so it might take a minute or two. Um, but that's how I know when mine are done. You might want a different effect. You might not like that texture, so stop before then. Um, but that's really how I like to do mine, so that's how I'm going to do mine. You do yours the way you want it. But this is the easiest recipe in the world. And then flavor with whatever you want to flavor. Um, I actually have another thing that I've had. This, this is going to make it not vegan, so I apologize. But I happen to have these in my cabinet at all times because you buy one bag and it lasts forever. Um, this is Bonito. Uh, if you are not vegan or vegetarian, Bonito is a fish. Um, you can sprinkle a few of these flakes on top with your salt or your citrus or your ponzu sauce. Uh, Bonito is awesome. Um, if you're not used to it, 
it's like it's it's fish, but it's dried and then sh uh, shaved basically, so it's super super thin. Um, you can garnish that on top as well. I'll probably add that to mine just because I like the taste. If you think that sounds disgusting, don't worry about it. You don't need to put it on there. It's just a suggestion because I really like it. So I'm probably going to do mine with a little lime, a little ponzu sauce, and some bonito flakes to finish it off. All right, let's see how our peppers are doing. They're getting some nice looking blisters. They're starting to get soft, at least the small ones are. Flipping it over. So basically, I flip the peppers, I give it a couple minutes in the pan, I flip the peppers again, and you just keep going until it's cooked all the way to the way you want it. This big old guy I'm trying to roll on his side so that he gets the underside cooked. Same with this big old guy. The small ones are cooking just fine. Some of them are splitting open, totally fine. As long as you're not getting hit by hot oil, that's all I request. Be safe. Cook it with oil can suck. Um, I actually had some excess oil come off the peppers and fill the pan, which I didn't want. So make sure you are using about one to two tablespoons of olive oil to start. If you think you need more, add a tiny bit more. But keep it simple. Keep it sparing. This is easy, don't overthink it. And if you overthink it, it's fine. I'm, I'm not dying here because there is some excess oil. Woo! Note that if you uh, stir it and move things around, it'll kick up more oil than if you just leave it be for a few minutes. Also, if these pop open, they might add some water to the pan, which will make things kick up a little. So just be careful as you're cooking. Again, cooking with oil, gotta be safe. Um, if you were doing this in the oven, you would leave your sheet pan in for about five minutes, check on it, see what's blistered, see if it's shrinking. It's going to look very similar to what's happening in my pan right now. Um, this one is more or less done. You're going to cook it different times. See that? Nice and soft. I'm going to dump out some of this olive oil and put it in my bowl. Nice and soft. But it's shrunk a little. It's going to have a nice bite to it. Some of these are still the consistency of like a raw bell pepper. I don't really want that. I want it to cook down a bit, get soft, tender, tasty. This one's ready to go. So second one done, a couple more to go. All right, it's 317. So either I talk too much or this is gonna take slightly longer. Your cooking time may vary. A couple of these are pretty big. So that's gonna slow down your cooking time a little. It's not the end of the world. All right, this one. Looks pretty done, so we're going to take it out. Oop. So I'm taking them out one at a time. You don't have to do this. I just want them to cook to a certain stage and then stop. You can have them all cook to whatever stage you want and then stop, and then some of them will be a little softer than others. Um, I just happen to have this nice silicone spatula, so I'm scooping them out when I can. So these bigger ones, I'm trying to push to the middle to just get them to cook more. I'm going to flip this guy over. Come on. There you go. Cook up. So patience, that's the key. Just keep waiting. There is no way to tell which ones are spicy, by the way. I thought I had figured it out where I was like, yellow ones, i got to avoid those. That was a lie. I, I don't know. Again, this is a roulette snack. It's fun. Some are going to burn you to death and some aren't. It's not that bad. It's not like eating a ghost pepper. It's like eating kind of a, it's like biting into a hot jalapeno, I, I guess. Um, it's not bad unless you get a batch that all of them happen to be spicy just by roll of the dice. That's happened to me once. It's not happened to me every time I've had these. Again, they remain my favorite snack. And they're very trendy right now, so you might be able to find them. Uh, where to buy these? Um, I have seen them in Whole Foods. And sometimes if your supermarket is hip and likes to bring in things that are trendy, you might see like a bag of them for sale in the produce section. Uh, your best bet though is actually a farmer's market. If you have access to a farmer's market, go check there. Uh, I got this from my CSA myself. I, if you guys don't know, I subscribe to Local Roots. I love them. Uh, I tag them in my posts from time to time. Um, and they had these as an add-on and I bought like three containers because I was like, gimme! Very excited about them. Alright, this one's 
very bubbly and very charred on one side, so I'm removing it. You can see they shrink down quite a bit, especially when the heat is off them. They deflate like a balloon. That's fine. That's the way I want my peppers. But again, if you don't want your peppers that way, you don't have to have them. You can stop the process early. I can't even lift this. I'm trying to show people. Come on. Like this one is a big boy, and he hasn't cooked down a lot. He's not going to deflate yet because he needs more time. So you can stop the process. They'll be a little more crunchy. If that's the way you like your peppers, go for it. There's no wrong way. You can eat these raw. Uh, they're not as fun, I think. I feel like the charring gives it more flavor. Um, but if you undercook them, there's no danger there. It's not like going to poison you or anything. So you'll be fine. Right. I'm kind of just poking them. Anything that's soft. I scoop out. That one's resilient. We're getting close. We got seven left, which is almost a serving size, which happens to be eight. So fun fact for you guys. So as the rest of these are cooking down, I'm going to add a little of my ponzu sauce to the bowl. Uh, I'm actually not going to sprinkle any salt because this has salt in it because it has soy sauce. So. Just be wary, if you are using Asian sauces and they are not low sodium, you may be inviting lots of salt into your life. I am aware, so I'm just going to be very sparing with everything. So once these are all done, I'll toss everything in the ponzi sauce. I might add a little extra lime for kicks, because I like that citrus flavor. Citrus brings out flavors, so you might be able to skip the salt entirely if you put lime and lemon juice on it. You notice I didn't remove any of the stems from these. The reason for that is that you don't need to. I actually use the stems as a nice handle. And then you bite everything off except the very cap. It's a finger food. It's fun. It's a good snack. It's a good... I've had these garnishing things like ramen. So you can put them on top of anything as a nice little treat. They're very versatile. Or you can just eat them by the bowl full. Which is totally fine and acceptable and delicious. And I recommend it. This really small one doesn't want to cook down. I don't know why. But I've defeated it, I think. There we go. So you're really just watching me cook down the remainder here. This one big one looks like he's at the end of his rope. You can see it's got a little char on it. That's good. Actually, the other side of that one that had a little char is pretty green. So we're going to have like a mixed texture. It'll be nice. Okay. Is all that's left are the three biggest ones, I think. I think this one might be faking it. It might just be inflated because of the heat. Come on. Yeah, he's inflated. He's given up, so it's just the two big ones left now. Boop. All right. So here are shishito peppers. That's my nice little snack for this afternoon. Um, again, it's like the world's easiest thing. You put it in a pan, you take it out of a pan. It's very hard to mess it up unless you overcook it and you just don't overcook it. Don't walk away from your pan. That's like cooking 101. Hey, that's the name of the show. Um, watch what you're doing. I, if you're sitting there and poking it a lot, that's totally okay. Um, when you first put them in the pan, just give them a minute and then you can just start poking them like I am. Is it soft? Is it soft? Is it soft? And I just do that for 10 minutes until it's soft. And that's all you gotta do. It's soft. This one doesn't want to be soft. Oh, but I'm poking it. Oh, it's getting soft. I think it's ready to go, guys. There we go. So a little more ponzu sauce to flavor it. There we go. Not too much. A little lemon, or lime. I know what I'm doing here. I'm not even going to go crazy. You can actually wedge your citrus and just add it as a garnish, which I'm going to do. But that's how easy it is to make. Ten minutes in a pan, five minutes in your broiler on a sheet pan. Um, maybe a little bit longer. Like I said, these all cook up at different temperatures. And as of right now, because I haven't added the Bonito Flakes, this is a nice vegan treat. Here we go. 
I'll add the Bonita Flakes later. Later, you don't have to see that. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. That was my Shishito Peppers uh, tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you have a suggestion for the show, please let me know. Uh, if you want to work with me, because I'm a weirdo, but I'm also a dietitian and I will make eating well fun, uh, you can always go to my website, jrockrd.com. Um, otherwise, keep tuning in. Keep giving me your suggestions. Uh, keep seeing me every week. Uh, just a reminder, I'm going to be on vacation next week, so there will probably be a repeat that I post. Or maybe I'll stream from the middle of the woods. I don't know. I might not have any service, so don't count on that happening. Um, but in two weeks, if you have a suggestion, please let me know what you want to see me cook. And I will see you guys then. Have a good week.